Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, I humbly beseech you as I offer words this evening to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Matthias, an apostle and martyr. He was the apostle who is best known for having replaced Judas. In one biography of St. Matthias, the author actually said, St. Matthias' story begins with Judas, and then he proceeds for most of the article to tell us all about Judas's life, and then as if forgetting, at the end comes back to throw in a little bit about Matthias. My guess is that none of us, if we were honest, want to be remembered for the people that we replace. (laughs) None of us want to be remembered as leaders in the church who replaced the good old days. St. Matthias ministered in Judea and elsewhere, they say. He traveled across the Caspian Sea and lived a good and holy Christian life in Cappadocia. And many were added to their number, we're told, and the church grew, so say the Greeks. He knew a land that was divided, kingdoms and warring tribes. Yet Matthias, undaunted, planted gospel seeds that would eventually bear much fruit. Think of St. Macrina, the Macrina, St. Basil, and St. Amelia two great Gregories of Nyssa and Nazianzus, of which we would not have them without Matthias. He took no side, but shared the good news of the gospel. And because of that, many found Christ during his life's work. He called people to serve God and sent them out like Moses did and Jesus did to share the good news wherever they found themselves. The Greeks believe he is buried at the fortress of Jonio, once called Apsaris. Now a hollow shell of a building with but a few pilgrims to give thanks from time to time. Now I say all of this because it's important to understand that in difficult times across the centuries, people have been through trial and storm as Christians, through long journeys with terrible ends through division, martyrdom, and death like St. Matthias, Matthias. And yet the church has continued its ministry. The named are few compared to the unnamed masses of faithful, good people. For they, they are all too often the unnamed saints of our local devotion like you. Daunted in their day, yet resilient in the face of life because of the strength of God's Holy Spirit, the church's life and ministry, sure, it's sometimes gone astray, and people have bickered. However, interestingly enough, I read this, God's church continues to survive. It's a story of loss. And it's a story of growth. Take, for instance, Paul's letter to Corinth. The town of Corinth is now empty. The whole town moved about 2.5 miles away and raised up and has risen up with the same name. Uh, The Corinth of Paul had 90,000 people in it. Today, it's only barely 28,000. Still quite huge compared to some parts of Texas. St. Matthias' church in Georgia, it's an empty shell. And yet each mission 
during their time in their place has a legacy of lives changed that make a difference later on. Through our faithfulness, faith is passed from generation to generation in small places and big places. Now, I can't imagine that people weren't worried about the church's future back then, but maybe they did. I kind of think survival may have been more pressing most times. It'd be odd to think, though, that Paul decided not to write to Corinth well, because those churches would be gone in time. Or that St. Matthias decided to stay in Jerusalem and wait in that upper room despite what Jesus and the Holy Spirit wanted him to do. Because in the end, oh, Georgia was a long way to go. And I have to tell you, what I have discovered over the many years of ministry is God rarely tells us about what it's really going to be like. Neither Matthias nor Paul knew where they were going to go, what they were going to do, or even, maybe like Moses, what they would say when they were asked. And maybe like you and me, from time to time, a bit of doubt crept in about God's providence. Maybe they wondered if it would be successful or not. But what we know is that Paul did write the letters to other churches also now mostly foundations and rubbled heaps. And St. Matthias did go out. Consider this. What if God had decided not to come and be among us because of our broken and sinful ways, but chose to stay in the highest heavens? That is not our story. No. While we were yet far off, Christ came to us. Grace and mercy and love offered to everyone he seemed to me. Now what I'm highlighting here is that one cannot have hope in the future of the church while one thinks the future of the church is dependent upon one's solo success in any one place or at any one time. That thinking is too small. The gospel is not played for the winning. It is played for the losing. For those who lose their life, find it. We are invited by God's Holy Spirit itself to take up our cross. And my gosh, misdirection, subterfuge, flat out sinfulness keeps us tripping all over ourselves because we are fallen human beings, but God and God's Holy Spirit is faithful. Any accomplishment we have is because, because of God's Spirit moving more and more till the end of the ages. I say we in Texas have hope. We have hope in Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit to do great things, greater things than we can ask or imagine. Because we recognize the church is not ours, it's not mine, and it's not yours. But rather it is the temple of the Holy Spirit, wherein you and I serve faithfully, oh, but for a short while. Not with our own desire leading us, but with the eyes and arms of Christ stretched out before us. That's how we lead. Where we do so faithfully, though sinfully, ever grateful for Jesus. Plenteous of grace, Christ crucified always before us. Worshiping God and sharing what we have and by doing good works. We aim to do the work that Christ has given us. Work that is worthy of God's sacrifice and calling. Now, I'll tell you, you all will hear a heresy from time to time. Now, I'm not talking about what you hear from me. <laughs> you already know that. I'm going to tell you something you don't know. You will hear a heresy of our day published in many places, and this is it. 
The church is dying. Excuse, excuse. The church, oh, the church is dying. It's so sad how the church is dying. And the reason it's dying is because of those people over there. They're doing something terribly wrong, and God is cursing all of us because of them. If it weren't for them, the church would grow. Oh, my gosh, it'd grow so much. <laughs> well, that is a favorite and pretty sounding heresy to be sure, but it's hogwash and misguided to confine God's mission and church to feeble efforts like ours. For indeed, even saints like Paul and Matthias understood, not out of humility, I would say, but out of truth, that we are each sinful enough and that it is only by grace we accomplish this mission. Each have our own sin, our own cross to carry, each on the precipice some days, making it just maybe hour by hour. But let us not ever question God's veracity, tenacity, or the victory of Jesus Christ. In the manner of St. Matthias, of St. Paul, and Christ our Lord, we take up our cross, dealt to us, not chosen, as individuals and community members, and we raise the fiery banner of hope in Lindale, in Decatur, Palacios, and Orange. We raise a banner of hope and say, Christ has work before us, let us undertake it together. I can't do it by myself, I need you. Regardless of Paris, St. Martin's, our largest, or Matagorda, our first, regardless of where we meet in a theater, a coffee shop, or some beautiful grand monument, from north to south to east and west, we are here in Texas celebrating births, baptizing, confirming, marrying people, burying people, ordinations and new ministries, constantly proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ to anyone who would listen. We send disciples all over the world and into our neighborhoods. We are a church in Texas that is alive. Now we grow and we lose. We sacrifice and there ain't any of us getting out of here alive. And yet, we go down to that grave singing Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. And we bring life and light of the gospel to a world that's desperately in need of it. For the news of our church's demise is highly overrated. Instead, instead here in Texas at least, we will tell the news of our forgiveness and God's mercy and God's personal redemption of our promised resurrection and our faith in things to come. Oh, St. Matthias, you should see us now. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter, at Texas Bishop, and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.